Okay, welcome back. So uh, this is another video in our review of calculus, especially the Taylor series. And here I'm going to do one of my favorite examples. This is a really, really neat example. So we're literally going to write down the Taylor series uh, for f of x equals the exponential of x. And I'm going to show you that you can use this, uh, this Taylor series to actually derive the cosine and sine functions using, uh, you can derive Euler's function. And this is gonna be super important in differential equations, complex analysis. This is gonna come up everywhere uh, in math and in applied math. So I kinda like this, uh, this example. Okay, um, so the Taylor series in the last lecture I showed you how to derive this, you know, f of x uh, is approximately f at zero plus f prime at zero times x plus f double prime at zero times x squared over two factorial dot dot dot. You can write this out. I'm just going to write out what the Taylor series is for e to the x. Um, maybe I'll write it above my head so I don't chop my head off. e to the x is going to be, I should remember this uh, off the top of my head. Uh, is one plus x plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the fourth over four factorial plus x to the fifth over five factorial. Um, I probably don't need to go that high. I'll just say plus dot 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 plus higher order terms, terms in you know, x to the sixth, seventh, eighth, higher order terms. Uh, and the, the generic term, I'm gonna say this is the sum from, uh, let's say, am I using index k? I'll say k equals zero to infinity of x to the power k over k factorial. This is probably the most important Taylor series you can remember. So, you know, what I'm gonna ask you to do, this is a really good exercise for you, is write down the actual, uh, so this is technically a Maclaurin series because we're kind of expanding about x equals zero. So it's a Taylor series expanded about x equals zero. You can use the formula I gave you in the last lecture uh, for the Taylor series, and you can verify that this is exactly what you get when you compute, um, you know, e to the zero is one. The first derivative um, of e is, you know, e to the x is also e to the x and so on and so forth. And you can get that these are all of the coefficients for this, uh, this, this Taylor series or Maclaurin series expansion. So that's a homework exercise for you is to verify that this is true, but I'm just writing it down. And if someone shakes you awake in the middle of the night on a desert island, um, you know, two in the morning, you should first of all probably be able to write this down you know, out of memory if you are a, an engineer or a scientist, it's so important. Uh, but even more important than that is you should be able to be, to like derive this from first principles using kind of your definition of a Taylor series, okay? But that's not uh, exactly what I wanna show you. What I wanna show you is how you can use this expression to derive Euler's formula, which is really, really neat, okay? So we're going to write, I'm also gonna write this in yellow and I'm gonna try not to chop my head off. Again, so now if we take e to the i x, let's say we plug in a complex number. So x is real. Let's say we plug in an imaginary number e to the i x. This is going to get interesting. And this doesn't have to be just purely imaginary. This could actually be a, a full on complex number, but we're just going to say e to the i x. And I'm literally every place here where I see an x, I'm going to replace it with an i x. So that's going to equal. Um, 1 plus ix plus ix squared over 2 factorial plus ix cubed over 3 factorial plus uh, ix to the 4th over 4 factorial. I'm going to write it up to 5th. Uh, ix to the 5th over 5 factorial plus dot dot dot, so on and so forth forever. And here's where it gets interesting. Now, you know, anytime I have an i squared, that's a real number again. Anytime I have an i to an odd power, I'm gonna have an i pop out. So oh, let me just write this out and, and we'll, we'll collect all of our terms. This equals one plus i x, i squared is minus one, so this is minus 
x squared over 2 factorial. i cubed is minus i, so this is minus i x cubed over 3 factorial. i to the fourth is 1 again, so this is plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. i to the fifth is, we're going back to i, so this is plus i x to the fifth over 5 factorial, and it's going to repeat. My, um, my, my x to the sixth is going to be a minus x to the sixth over 6 factorial, then minus i x to the seventh over 7 factorial, plus x to the eighth over 8 factorial, and so on and so forth forever and ever, plus dot, 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 dot. And so what's kind of cool now is I can, I, I notice that all of my even powers of x, my x to the 0, x to the 2, x to the 4, x to the 6th, don't have any i's out front. All of my i's canceled because they were squared or taken to the 4th power or the 6th power. So all of my even powers here don't have an i. I'm going to write those in pink. And all of my odd terms do have an i. My, my x to the 1 power has an i. My x cubed has an i. My x to the 5th has an i. x to the 7th and 9th and 11th are all going to have i's because those are not canceling out. And so I can actually group this into my even powers that don't have an i and all of my odd powers that do have an i. So I'm going to write that out. This equals, and let's start with all of my, uh, my even powers. So this equals 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. That's all of my terms with no i's, with no imaginary part. And now I'm going to write down all of my, uh, my x terms. Plus all of these have an imaginary part and I have x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus and plus and dot 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 forever and ever. And here's where it gets really interesting. You should recognize now from you know, the previous lecture, this is the Taylor series for cosine and this is the Taylor series for sine. So this literally equals this is cosine of x, and this whole thing here with the i and everything is i sine of x. And so this is Euler's formula, one of the most important formulas in all of math, it's a really beautiful formula, is that e to the i x is equal to cosine of x plus i sine of x. And this is going to come up and be useful all the time when we solve differential equations. So when we solve a differential equation, uh, you know, x dot equals um, lambda x, we know that the solution of this is going to be something like x of t equals e to the lambda t times my initial condition x naught. What if my eigenvalue, sorry, I'm saying eigenvalue, I haven't told you what an eigenvalue is yet, but what if this lambda is an imaginary number? This is going to happen for real physical systems, for things like a mass on a spring, anything that has oscillation or a pendulum. We're going to find that we're going to write those differential equations in terms like this, where this is now an imaginary or a complex number. And so I'm going to need to be able to take e to an imaginary number and write it down in terms of its cosine and sine component, which is kind of going to make sense because if I have an oscillating mass on a spring or if I have a pendulum that's oscillating, of course that's going to be described by periodic oscillating functions, cosine and sine. So this is going to come up a lot in our solutions of differential equations. If that was a little fast, that's okay. This is like the whole next week of this, this course is all talking about, you know, how to do this for, uh, for real and imaginary land does and where that comes into physical systems. But for now, I just want to point out that with Taylor series, you can do really powerful things like you can derive uh, Euler's formula. And again, I'm going to um, you know, emphasize anything with Euler's name is a big deal, so don't forget Euler's formula. This is really, really, really important. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, so you should be really facile with this kind of computation uh, and start getting really comfortable going back and forth from you know cosines and sines and e's to their various power series because we're going to use this a lot. Okay, thank you.